Okay, and now it's time to create some machines. We do that under the Compute tab under Instances. Here we just hit Launch Instance. And then we had a lot of different settings that we can set up. The first thing is a name for the machine. And, and here it's good to have some sort of naming convention for your um, machines. So you know what the machine is used for. If it's a name server, then maybe you should have NS or name server in the name. Um, by default, this will also be the host name for the machine. Um, so don't pick anything too long because that can uh, create trouble uh, problems for you um, but you can change the host name uh, afterwards the first machine i will create now is a linux machine so i just text linux we have two availability zones and I don't have to go into detail about what these are, but um, they are uh, self-explanatory. For Linux machines, you should put them in Linux computers. And for Windows computers, you should put them in Windows computers. Uh, you can create multiple instances at once uh, with the same settings. So if you wanted three machines with the same settings, you can add three or four or what you want. I only want one now. And then we have the source. And this is important part. Um, from what operating system will this machine be using? And we have predefined images. You should not choose volumes as a, it's pre-selected. Uh, you should use image. And below here, you can see that we have four different uh, images. Uh, we have a Windows Server 2012 R2 core without the graphical interface and we'll have one with the graphical interface and then we have a client the Windows client and then at least uh, at last we have the Ubuntu server um, but one Im very important thing here is that you should not create a volume for the image um, if you do that you can run into some problems so always hit no here for the create of volumes and then the what machines you want i want an ubuntu server and here you won't see any installation process something like that we have these machines are already installed uh, on these images the next thing is the hardware for the server the virtual hardware and as you can see i got it these yellow warnings uh, because in our uh, image depending on what you have chosen here it will say that on this for this particular image you can't use this because you need at least five gigabytes of root hard disk and if you choose another uh, machine here for the server the windows server you will have have to go up to this uh, but go back to the Linux. And you shouldn't crank it up too much because you have limited resources. So if you don't know that you need more than the minimum, you should only choose the minimum that are uh, the minimum requirements. So for this one, it's the half a gig of RAM, five gig hard disk. In the networks, since we only have one now, you will create more later on in the course, then it won't be selected. You have to select the network down below. But now we only have one, so that's pre-selected. Then we have the network ports. You don't have to do anything here. And the security groups, we haven't created one yet. This is something that I have done before, but you shouldn't ignore that for now. You should have none here, but we have a default one. And the security groups are um, a sort of a fi firewall. What traffic is allowed to and from the machine. But we will talk about the security group later on. For now, we can just choose default. And 
then we have the key pair so that has been pre-created for you you should not create one or should not import one uh, you should be using the one that already been created and the rest of this configuration you don't have to do anything about just hit launch instance now it is spinning up the machine uh, it doesn't take that long uh, it will have gotten an IP address from that uh, DHCP pool that you uh, created when you did the network. Uh, you can go into the machines and here we see the different settings for that machine. We have a console. Uh, the machine has to be created before we can see the console. Uh, this console has big limitations um, if you're using Windows the mouse is laggy and difficult to use and even the keyboard can be quite hard to use so we usually don't use this console we will remote manage the machine uh, via some other way um, if it's a Linux machine we probably will be using SSH if it is a Windows machine, we will use remote desktop. Uh, we can see the machine is now up and running. We can go back to the console and you should see that it's spinning up. Yeah, we are at the login page. But we don't know the password. And we didn't choose that in the um, when we set up the instance. And we are not able to do that even. For Linux machine, they will use this key file pair that was pre-created. So when you are logging into the system, you need to have the private key. Uh, so be able to connect to this machine, you have to use SSH. But then we will use SSH from our local machine where you are sitting, and you have to go through the internet to connect to the machine, and you can't contact this private IP address over the internet. So how do we do this? Well, first off, you need to have a public IP address so that we can SSH to that one. And we do that by assigning a floating IP. And for the first time, I think I have one, but you won't have one here. You have five that you can use. You will hit this plus sign, and then it will take a, a, an available address from the Internet LAN pool. And then you will connect that to this machine. So now it has a, a public IP address. Um, but as I was talking about with the security group, um, no traffic is allowed into this machine from the internet. And we only had one security group for this machine, the default one. And if we go under access and security, and we have the security group, I can delete this one. You don't wouldn't have that one yet. Uh, if we look at the default security group, it has some predefined rules. Uh, egress is for outgoing uh, traffic. So here we can see that IPv4 and IPv6 is allowed on any uh, port protocol, uh, IP protocols and any range uh, to any network actually. So from the machine you can go outside to the internet and to other networks. But ingress, also incoming traffic, we are allowing any protocol and any range, but only from the default security group itself. This means that uh, for incoming, it can only be from machines that are uh, having the same security group. Uh, so you can say that all machines that you have the default security group assigned to them uh, will be able to contact each other. We, we won't edit this one now. We will use 
create another security group because what we want to do now is use SSH to connect to the machine. Uh, so we go back to our and create a new security group for SSH. Uh, as you might have guessed, you can assign multiple security groups to one machine. So we'll create a security group and then we will add some rules to that one. By default, it allows traffic out. So that this we won't uh, change. Then we will add a new rule and there are you can create your own rule which direction which port uh, and from what uh, to what network you should be able to uh, contact and they are predefined for SSH so you can just hit SSH and we will when you see this it's all networks if you have a fixed IP address at home you could enter your IP address here and then only your uh, IP address will be able to use SSH for your machine that will be the best way uh, but uh, I don't think that you have uh, statically assigned uh, IP address at home so leave this and then all um, machine can access it but you have to have the private key of course and here we see the rule incoming traffic IPv4 TCP port 22 which is the full port for SSH and from any network now we created this security group but we haven't assigned it to the instance so we can go to the instance and look at edit security group and we see what we have the default one and we can add the SSH so we can have multiple here and you can use this SSH for multiple machines also of course so now we have the this machine created and it's up and running we have a public IP address and we have the firewall up, uh, up and running so that we can contact it from outside so then we go to our uh, SSH client. Uh, here I'm on um, Mac OS, but you can use Linux uh, or even Windows if you have Git Bash uh, installed. Uh, from there you can use SSH. You could use uh, a third party uh, SSH client if you would like. But what you need to do is you need to have the private key but we have already discussed this in a previous video uh, so it should be in your keychain uh, if it's in your keychain uh, you will be able to contact the server by just typing SSH and um, the user account uh, that uh, you will use to contact the server and on Ubuntu the username is Ubuntu and then we hit uh, at key uh, um, and after that we should have the server IP or name so if we go back to our machine you see that we have this IP address we actually have mapped all these IP addresses to a static name so if you just type lab cloud FTK and then afterwards just type 19 uh, then you can use this um, FQDN uh, I can open up a new just so you see that it works and let's look up for this and as you see it can look that up it's easier to remember the names uh, than the IP addresses uh, so if you have the 
the key already loaded in the, the keychain, uh, you will be able to contact this. The first one is that it will store the, the fingerprint uh, the first time you connect to a server. And these can be uh, a bit uh, pr tr trouble uh, because if you change the floating IP to another machine, then you will have already uh, stored the fingerprint for that machine, for that name, and then the uh, SSH client will warn you that something, someone is doing something bad. Uh, but if that's the case, you need to go and clear this, and then you will get a file name that you have to open up and, re and remove this fingerprint. But otherwise, you just type yes. And as you see here, that this was the case. Uh, that I already had this as a known host. That's good. I probably haven't been contacting this machine either. Um, so then I have to go into this file and remove that part. I will do that on the other screen so you don't see that. Uh, for security reasons, I have a lot of different other machines in this file. Uh, so just hang on. But as you can see here, uh, I wasn't able to access it because permission denied. And that's because I haven't loaded my key file uh, into the, uh, the keychain. But you can actually specify which key file you want to use. Uh, and since I'm using a student account here, uh, I didn't want to load that uh, key file. So it's just type the dash i and then specify where that key file is. Mine is in download. There is my key file. And now I'm connected to that machine. So all the commands that I am issuing here will be uh, in the Linux machine. If I want to um, get back to my machine, I just type exit. Uh, if I run the SSH command again, uh, I will get back to the machine. Okay. From this machine, I would be able to contact other machines within the uh, that uh, area network uh, in the cloud. So I only need to have a public IP for the one machine and then I can jump from this machine to other machines uh, to administer them. Okay, for Windows machine, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, we can launch a new instance. test windows we put that in the windows computers and the source should be an image we should not create a volume and we can create the windows server with the GUI and we pick a flavor for the hardware yes and the network we only have the one and same with the security group. Here we can't use SSH to contact the machine. Uh, we have to use another protocol, but we will create the 
the security group for that later on. And as you imagine, we can't authenticate ourselves with the uh, the key file here, the key pair. Uh, so, and we can specify the password. The Windows machine will be created with two user accounts, one that's called admin and one that's called administrator. The administrator account doesn't have a password by default, so you need to change that the first time you connect to the machine. And sometimes it works with the console. If it doesn't, then we need to use the terminal to run a command and get the generated password for the admin account. But uh, for now, we can just hit launch instance and it will be created quite quickly. We can go into the machine and look at the console. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, now it's created and it will start up the machine and a lot of different scripts will be run for this machine uh, in the beginning. So it will take a couple of minutes before it's up and running. And as you see here, you get this the first time. And you can see that I have two mouse cursors now. Uh, and one of them is the one in the machine. So it looks like the white one. Uh, and can can be quite hard to, to use this um, to administer the machine. But we, yes, and then we can type in a password. Now, if we are going to contact this machine later on uh, from the outside, we need to have a secure password. Um, but we can use a simple one now because you can't see it because when I'm typing, you will only have dots. But if I type uh, our Swedish character, sometimes they won't match. So it can be hard to get special characters and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes if you want and you need that in a secure password and sometimes you lose control yeah now I'm back so as you can see here it's quite hard to to get this to work And then you are logged in. Uh, but it's really hard to administer the server from this uh, interface. Um, so we will need some other way to contact this machine. Uh, if you're not able to log in with the administrator account, um, or you, you can't uh, type in the password, you can get the generated password for the admin account. But then you have to have the uh, OpenStack CLI installed uh, and that will be done in a later video um, but I can show you the command um, how to get the password uh, and I have to go back to my machine 
and then you will have you can't issue these commands until you have installed the, the OpenStack uh, uh, command line client um, but that will be done in a later video but to list the machine you type OpenStack server list and here we see my machines and I need this ID first off so I need that ID and then I type another command nova get password then I need to specify for which machine and this is the ID did I get the correct one no I took the wrong one I should have for the Windows machine of course So we should get the right one. And after the machine, you specify the key file. So here we're using the key file so that we can get the, the password. So you have to specify the location for that file. And here we get that password. So now if you won't be able to set the password for the administrator account, then we can use this one. Um, but then how do we connect to the machine uh, from the internet? Well, we're using a protocol called uh, RDP, Remote uh, Desktop, and that is included in Windows machines. Uh, so we need to create a security group Oh, I've been logged out. This happens sometimes that you get logged out if you are not uh, using the interface for a while or you can't even get logged out if you try to access part of the interface where you had, don't have access. Uh, especially under this identity tab you shouldn't be at all so I create a new security group RDP and add some rules to that one this is also predefined RDP and then we assign that to the machine Uh, we can't use SSH on a Windows machine, so we shouldn't add that to this instance. Now, we also need a IP address, a floating IP address, if we will be able to access it from the internet. And then we need a client, a remote desktop client. And these clients are available for Mac OS, uh, Linux, and, and are built in in Windows machines. So just uh, download and install, if you're not on Windows, a remote desktop client. Um, I have one here for Mac OS. Uh, I need, of course, the IP address. So you just have a name. And the IP address or the name, we can use the name if we want the DNS name and the credentials. I will use the admin because we got that password here. And then we can set some uh, for the resolution. This interface will differ from, um, depending on your operating system. I forgot one setting. I don't want to use the full screen mode in this demo. And hopefully we will be connected. Yes, 
Uh, now I use the admin account. My recommendation, if you use the admin admin account, you should disable the administrator account or put a really hard password for it. Especially if you didn't enter a password for it, it will have no password, which is not good. So you can right click on the Windows uh, icon here and go to computer management. And local users and groups. And here we have the administrator account and you can disable that account or put in a really hard password. Um, and from here you can administer other machines. So you only need one Windows machine with a public IP address. Uh, and then you can use remote desktop to, to connect to other machines locally uh, in the cloud, sort of say. Uh, so if I would have created another Windows machine, I could use the, the private, the, the, the internal IP address to contact that when you are connected to uh, one machine in the, uh, in the cloud. And that goes for uh, Ubuntu uh, server, Linux servers also. Then you can, if you create multiple, you can uh, connect to the private IP from that one with uh, SSH. So that's it for creating machines uh, in the web client.